Oh, yeah, it's me, your number one taco boy. The world of tacos is wide and diverse and impossible to make in one video. So we decided to do a series. We wanted to kind of play on the classics, but also come up with some new ideas and show you some riffs. Lauren and I eat a ton of tacos at home, probably once or twice a week. And in trying to figure out where to start this series, it seemed obvious that we would go with barbacoa. Barbacoa is probably number one in rotation at our house behind shrimp. Lauren, love shrimp. What's up? But I wanted to give you guys a recipe that Played to all the classic things we like about barbacoa, which is like smoky, dark, dried chili flavor, really tender, shreddy, beefy meat, and then also some sort of bright salsa on top of that. Now, barbacoa is usually a special occasion dish, but it doesn't have to be. Make a margarita, do a beer or two. You guys are going to get wild and crazy on your own. In this series, we're also going to talk about my favorite salsas because there's no great taco without a great salsa. This isn't like some fruitless effort to make DIY ketchup at home. Fresh salsas really matter and they're really worth the time and effort. Our first salsa is going to be classic. It's going to be roasted tomatillo and poblano. Four ingredients, but still super tasty. And it'll be the perfect complement to our beefy, rich tacos. So I think that's plenty of setup. Let's make some tacos. For the barbacoa part of this recipe, you're going to need three and a half to four pounds of boneless chuck roast, one red onion, four cloves of garlic, the juice of one orange. In the glass on the end here, we've combined two cups of water or chicken stock, one tablespoon ground cumin, one tablespoon crushed red chili flake, one tablespoon dried oregano, one tablespoon salt, two tablespoons chili powder, one tablespoon paprika, and one tablespoon sugar. We're going to puree this liquid and the spices with our onion, orange juice, and garlic. Peel the red onion and garlic and pop it in the blender jar. Puree on high for 10 to 15 seconds or until well broken down and smooth. Wait a minute, what is barbacoa? It really just refers to the process of taking tough cuts of meat and cooking them with steam or coals underground. Obviously we're talking about Mexican style barbacoa here today, but this tradition is pervasive across the world, particularly in South America, Central America, and Southeast Asia. There's a lot of regional diversity of barbacoa as well. In Northern Mexico, they're doing barbacoa with a lot of off cuts of beef or beef head. In Central Mexico, it's a lot more about goat and lamb barbacoa. If you go out to the Yucatan, they're gonna be doing whole roasted pork or cochinita pabil. Now, modern Mexico, Southeast Asia, a lot of the grannies and abuelas are probably just using pressure cookers on top of their stoves, so that's what we're doing here today. The things that I find in barbacoa that are omnipresent, whether you're in Asia or Mexico, is some sort of dried chili, aromatics, onions, garlic, sometimes ginger in Asia, and then there's going to be some sort of citrus too, orange, limes, lemons, whatever you've got. Once we have our aromatics and spices pureed, we're going to grab our chuck roast and cut it in half. Then we'll cut it crosswise into medium large chunks. If they're too small, this mix will become too shreddy in the end. We won't have any texture in our taco. Keeping the pieces about this size gives us a good mix of the ropey, bigger strands of meat along with the finer shreddy stuff, and we'll see that a little bit later. Next, combine the cooking liquid and the beef in your pressure cooker and set it up to cook on low pressure for one hour. If you don't have a pressure cooker, don't sweat it. We can do it in the oven, we just need to make a couple of quick adjustments. We're going to use two more cups of liquid. We're going to do it in a Dutch oven or whatever kind of covered oven safe pot you have. We're going to bring it up to a simmer on the stove top, throw it in a 300 degree oven with a lid for about three hours. So while we're cooking that barbacoa, we're going to make some salsa. We need one pound of fresh tomatillos, one medium red onion, two poblano peppers or four jalapenos, and four garlic cloves. We're going to start by peeling and cutting our tomatillas. If you've never worked with these before, they can get really sticky. It's kind of weird, but it's normal. Follow with your onion and your poblano, cut them in the same size chunks, and then just smash your garlic. We're going to crowd this quarter sheet tray on purpose so we can do two things at once. One is we want to get char just on the top layer. So being under a hot broiler on high is going to do that for us. Everything else that's underneath is going to steam and become tender. Packing things closely keeps things steaming on the bottom, but it also protects the garlic from getting burnt. Under that kind of high heat, the garlic could easily turn black and we don't want that. We check back in about five minutes and then after 15 minutes total, it looks like this and we're good to go. We're gonna throw these in the food processor and let cool and steam in the jar for an additional five to 10. I'm adding two teaspoons of salt and then we're gonna mix it in real quick. We're gonna puree it by pulsing it until it has the consistency we like. If you want it pureed all the way smooth, go for longer. If you like it chunky, just pulse it a few times. I'm somewhere in the middle as you can see here. So this is a crossroads here. The ripeness of grocery store tomatillos can vary greatly. 
If you buy them too firm, then they're gonna be super tart, under ripe, and probably make your salsa not super tasty. So when you're buying them, make sure you're grabbing tomatillos that have just a little bit of give to them. Squeeze every one. You just want a little bit of softness. You don't want them mushy because then we won't have enough acid. We want them somewhere in the middle. Okay, so it's been 60 minutes and we've let our timer go off on the pressure cooker. We let the pressure fall naturally for about 20 to 30 minutes. Please don't release the pressure early. The meat will not be tender enough at that point. It needs the extra 20 minutes to fully break down. That being said, we're also not looking for a total shred fest. Something that really burns my butt is overcooked tender meat. You go to someone's house, they've had something in the crock pot all day, and they're like, yeah, it's so fall off the bone, it's so tender, but it also has no texture and doesn't really taste like meat. So when we're doing real cooking, we're looking for the finesse. So we're trying to get into that middle zone of tender enough, but not so tender that you don't need teeth to eat it. We're also gonna reserve one to two cups of the cooking liquid here. To make sure we're not getting all just fat from the top, we're gonna give this a stir, kind of create a little bit of a whirlpool and then use a ladle to scoop it out. Now's the part where things get a little bit crazy. We're gonna reverse sear this beef. I know you thought it was weird when I put some raw beef in a pot earlier and expected it to be super delicious. So what we're gonna do here is heat a medium large nonstick skillet over high heat. Then we're gonna take the beef that we have scooped out of our cooking liquid and drained a little bit, and we're gonna lay it into our nonstick pan. Don't worry about adding any fat. There's enough fat on the beef that it will sizzle it up. We're looking to get a deep caramelized crust on this beef. It takes about 10 minutes for us to do that. This is also where we're gonna use our spatula to break down the meat to the size pieces we want. I love having this level of control. You can kind of poke at it and break down the bigger chunks and leave some of that ropey stuff that we're talking about. We're building a lot of fun different bites this way. Like I said before, shreddy mixed with nice tender ropey bits is really what we're looking for. Okay, so we have all that nice color built up, so we're gonna deglaze with our cooking liquid. This is gonna evaporate and cook down really quickly. You can instantly see as I add it to the pan, it starts to glaze the meat as it concentrates. Cook this to the point that it looks shiny, glazy, saucy. I use about a cup of liquid here, but go crazy if you want. I personally don't like it when liquid drips out of the back end of my taco down my wrist, so I tightened it up quite a bit with reduction and glazed the meat well here. Taste the meat for seasoning. If it needs a little bit of salt, now would be the time. I also added a squeeze of lime here to brighten it up just a splash. Taste again, sip a margarita, taste again. As far as taco garnishes go today, we're gonna have some coarsely shredded queso fresco, raw red onion, cilantro, and our tomatillo salsa. Please don't put that grocery store feather shred Mexican blend on this stuff. We worked hard for these flavors and putting that on here at this point would be like putting ketchup on your steak. I get that everyone is their own little type of freak out there, but we live in a civilized world with clothing and the internet and Teslas. I'm not the boss, go crazy, treat yourself, put nacho cheese on this thing if you want. Just don't send me a picture of it. Tortillas matter too. Buy nice tortillas when you can get them. The room temperature grocery store ones usually have a ton of preservatives like parabens in them. And if you're cool with it, no big deal, they taste fine. But if you have access to good quality tortillas, treat yourself. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you go pick one up. This is a Goya brand styrofoam tortilla holder. Uh, you put your warmed tortillas in here and it keeps them steamy for like an hour. This is like three bucks. I cannot recommend a better way to spend $3, especially if you're a fan of tacos, which I would hope you are. Hecho in Mexico, made in Mexico. That's it, that's all I gotta say about that. So let's eat these tacos. This is the fun part where I will eat the tacos and you will watch. Barbacoa taco. Tastes good. 90 minutes start to finish from raw beef to snap it on barb. Really nice acidity from the tomatillos. Mm -mm -mm. I'm a taco boy. Me. Lauren, it's taco time. I got a platter full of tacos. In my mind, guys, tacos are at the top of the list for comfort food. It's super craveable and it can be made out of just about anything. You can put eggs on a taco, veggies, beans, every possible meat you can think of, and they do. I think our first effort here was strong. We made an aromatic base with some pureed dried spices, onions, garlic, and poured that over our barbacoa, and then we reverse seared and glazed that thing in a pan a little bit later on. Of course, we followed it up with our roasted tomatillo salsa, which I think is so tart, so fresh, 
an easy, delicious taco to make, whether it's a special occasion or a weeknight. As always, if you like this video, please hit subscribe, tell a friend, leave a comment. See you next time.